Hi, everyone. Welcome. We'll give it just a minute for everyone to join, and then we'll get started. Hi everyone, I see a few more people joining here. We're gonna give it just a minute to allow some others to join and then we'll get started. All right, let's kick it off. Hi there, thanks for joining us today. My name is Teresa Donahue. I'm the Brand Engagement Marketing Manager here at Volusion. I'm super excited to have our marketing partners from Marketing 360 with us today. And they're gonna share some tips and tricks for preparing your e-commerce e store for the holiday season. And I know it's only July, but it's best to get started on these things ahead of time and be prepared for them. So you can have a super successful um, holiday season. A uh, few reminders. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please submit them in the chat section below. We will be answering questions live at the end of the webinar. However, if we don't have time to address all the questions today, we will make sure to follow up with you um, in a follow-up email, which we'll, we will be sending out tomorrow. And we will also send you a link to the recording of this webinar in that follow-up email. We have a couple of promotions going on right now. Um, one we have is 50% off a website design with Marketing 360 with the purchase of a marketing service. So um, be sure to keep that in mind. I will send out details um, for this promotion in the follow-up email. And then we also have a free holiday website checkup with Angela Kirk. She's our Volusion Customer Success Specialist, and everything is customized to you and your website. So you'll meet with her one-on-one. -on -one. She'll pull up your website and give you tips and tricks and everything that you'll need to know um, to really improve your website. And she can also give you pricing as well. And this checkup is completely free to you. Um, I will paste the link in the chat section if you'd like to sign up during the webinar right now, but I'll also include in the follow-up email tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. All right, and we do have quite a bit to cover in today's webinar, and it's all incredible information. Um, so I'll just go over the agenda real quick. We'll be covering design for the holidays, email marketing, uh, pay-per-click and paid ads, shopping feeds, SEO, social media, and then we'll recommend a few tools that can help you um, stay organized during the holiday season, which includes a holiday promotional calendar. All right, so without further ado, I'm excited to introduce you all today to two of our Marketing 360 experts. Thank you so much for being here today, Andrew and Kyle. Um, we'll start with Andrew. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Marketing 360? Yeah, thanks, Teresa. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, as Teresa mentioned, my name is Andrew Elkins. I'm the Director of Partnership Marketing at Madwire. I've uh, been in the mar digital marketing space for about 20 years now. I've uh, been at Madwire for about 12 um, and been in partner with Volusion for a couple of years now, too. Um, my kind of role is to manage a team of account managers who actually exclusively manage Volusion accounts. Um, we started this partnership, like I said, a couple of years ago. And we've seen great success with some of the Volusion merchants that have started working with us. And we're excited to kind of give you any tips or tricks we can help you with for getting prepared for the holiday season, which for most um, uh, e-com sites is their busiest time of the year. And if it's not, then it should be. And this should help you do it. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Kyle, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Marketing 360? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely happy to be here and uh, looking at shopping ads as we move into the 2024 holiday season. And um, I've been in the digital marketing space for nearly 10 years um, and been with Marketing 360 for over seven of those. Um, and obviously, this space is continue and continues to evolve. And um, and my role within uh, Marketing 360 is uh, I'm the director of ads management and analytics. 
uh, for the team here. And we get to uh, manage and uh, optimize campaigns and build strategies for our clients uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, really excited to um, kind of take uh, what we've learned over the years and be able to implement them and provide some tips and tricks for the holiday season. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank All you. right, we'll move right along. Um, first topic, design for the holidays. Andrew, when it comes to website design, what are a few suggestions around preparing for the holiday season? Yeah, thanks, Teresa. And you kind of nailed it on the head. It is does seem like it's early to start thinking about, it, especially with this heat. It seems almost ridiculous to think about the holidays, but it's really important to, at the very least, start thinking about your holiday marketing strategy, right? If not, you can start to work on some of that collateral. Uh, one thing that I believe in throughout my years in marketing is you want to make things as obvious as possible, right? You want to make it really easy for clients to find your products and eventually give you their money, right? So the way to do that is making homepage banners that lead to dedicated holiday themed landing pages, right? That where there really, there's no other opportunity for them to do anything on that site except to leave or to purchase, right? And it's exclusively dedicated to those products that you and promotions that you want to feature during the holiday season. Uh, we like to create what's called the squeeze page, right? Which is essentially what that is, right? There's no other really things to do except to, to continue looking at these products for details and to add to cart and eventually purchase. Um, you want to make sure that you have a sense of urgency on there, right? You want to have some sort of exclusivity, if at all possible, and a clear call to action. Again, make it really simple and easy for someone to know what to do when they land on your site. Um, sometimes people focus on having a really beautiful website and landing page, but sometimes those can be counter-effective to what you're trying to do. Keep it simple and keep it obvious and make sure that the products that you want to feature are front and center. Uh, this would be the same thing when you're building out your campaigns, whether it's paid search, which Kyle will talk some more about too, or organic search. You want to create this content that, that literally holds their hand and walks them through the process of making this purchase. Great. Thank you so much. And then as far as promotions and sale graphics, what are some popular promotions that you see most often and what tips do you have to bring in more sales with them? Yeah, and I'm sure I'm not I'm not breaking any new ground here when I say that Black Friday and Cyber Monday are some of the most important days online now in shopping in general, but for sure Cyber Monday for online purchases. People anticipate these all year long and they're waiting for your promotions. They're actually waiting for you to tell them what to do. So think about those two holidays primarily because those will carry over to Thanksgiving, to Christmas, to all those different holidays that we have that, that are kind of traditional. Um, but the events are designed around shopping specifically, right? There's no other kind of component to them. So this is where people are coming in and ready to shop. Um, it becomes really important for you to create a content calendar so you know what to do either leading up to those sales and then once you have those, once you're in the middle of those sales, then even after them as well too. So give yourself enough time for to lead for creative work on the website, such as landing page design, email and social social media ad design, and again, Kyle will talk about some more about paid ads and and even some other social media ads as well. You want to make sure you have a consistent message across these multiple platforms. It takes usually about 18 touches to somebody before they make a purchase. So if they're seeing the same message over and over again, it's just going to reinforce that every time they see it. Uh, focus on the promotions and sales that you want to run, right? These are the products that you want to move. Um, again, create content, calendar design, you know, get everything done as much ahead of time as you possibly can. You can always plug in the specific products later. But if you're thinking about what that design should look like, look around, uh, see what you like, and maybe you can apply that to your business as well. Maybe something completely outside of your channel, but you thought that grabbed your attention and you can kind of rework that to make sense for your product too. Um, be creative and be playful, right? People like that too. They're going to see a lot of ads during that period of time. So something that's attention grabbing, maybe it makes them laugh a little bit, but definitely something that they'll remember and come back to you when it's time to make that purchase and they're done kind of shopping around. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, great. And then moving on to our second topic, email marketing for the holidays. Andrew, do you have any tips for email marketing um, as we go into one of the busiest shopping seasons of the year for e-commerce? Yeah, I sure do. And I think some people dismiss email marketing nowadays thinking that nobody reads it, but they do. If they didn't, people wouldn't still do it, right? So uh, there's always an opportunity to send out a one-time kind of email blast. Uh, I'm a big believer in kind of logical uh, journeys that someone can go through, conditional logic, where they will get a, a kind of series of emails that lead up to an event like Black Friday or Cyber Monday or Christmas. 
you know, you want to make sure that you uh, send, them, send them up ahead of time enough for any promotion and sales you have coming up. You don't want it the day up. You want it to lead up to that and let them build some excitement and create some awareness. Uh, you can create those email templates ahead of time that you can reuse. So really all you'd have to do is plug in a specific product or a specific promotion or date, but you can re reuse that same template over and over again. In fact, I think it's a good idea to do that, get them used to looking at the same thing and expecting that email to come through with the next in that series, right? Um, you know, you want to do, like I said, you know, a series that has multiple emails over a kind of predetermined uh, amount of time. Um, I'd like to do a couple examples. It'd be a journey where like the first email kind of uh, would highlight um, kind of a maybe a wish list or, or, or a gift guide. And you kind of build from there, you know, and feature different products and different messages over the next couple of emails. Then have that last email be a really call to action, urgently based email that's going to get people to act on that if they haven't already. Too. Okay, awesome. And then um, we have a slide here with some examples as well, just to give you an idea. Right. So, here's, and here's what I was talking about. Here's like your, if the first one on the left might be your initial email to get them to start building a gift guide or to look at yours or maybe build a wish list or a Christmas list. And the last one would be something that would come at the end of that journey, uh, telling them it's not too late to purchase. And maybe even after that promotion is already done, you might have a kind of follow up email saying like it's still, I mean, we've extended the sale or it's still available for you to take advantage of too. So I guess the the, the point being squeeze as much out of it as you possibly can. And, and, you know, start early, right? Because everybody's going to be doing the same kind of thing. So being early is a good thing. Uh, being first in this case, right? Get them again, ha and get yourself top of mind and into that journey. And then don't forget about them once the promotion is over. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Moving right along into our third topic, pay-per-click and paid ads for the holidays. Uh, Kyle, could you walk us through preparing for holiday campaigns when it comes to PPC? Like what's the best time to launch for specific holidays like Black Friday and Christmas? Yeah, absolutely. Um, really at the end of the day, uh, planning begins now. Um, you can And you can start uh, preparing and implementing those and starting that process in, in the beginning of the fall here in September. Uh, so beginning to think of that through that now and how we, we would want to game plan uh, the holidays um, is, is is becoming earlier and earlier within the holiday season. And so it's important that um, you're building out strategies that are preparing uh, and prepared for those holiday seasons. And, and so there's a lot of things that you can do to get yourself ready to go uh, for that season. Uh, first and foremost uh, is creating and updating any ad, ad copy or banners and preparing the assets. Like Andrew was saying, you want to get ahead of this and make sure that you have those assets ready and aligned. You have that consistent branding that's not only from an organic and your website into the email marketing you're doing, but then utilizing the same on-brand on brand material within your advertising as well. Um, and so I would recommend that you wouldn't just change out your existing ads, but that you'd create another ad and leave those paused until you're ready to enable those. Uh, but then those are ready to go for when you're, um, you're, you're launching your advertising into the holiday season. So preparing now allows you to be able to um, just get ready and ahead of things while other advertisers uh, and other uh, brands are then reacting. So you can get ahead of that. Um, and then promos, uh, the same promos that we would use and uh, want to bundle uh, that we talked about a minute ago, we want to use those within the advertising as well. Um, within the ad platforms themselves, you would be able to use promo extensions. Um, and then you'd also can use those same promos within your, um, your uh, shopping campaigns as well, which can be uploaded and implemented within Merchant Center. So those are really good, important things to be calling out as you get closer and closer to the holidays. And then free shipping um, as well. Um, if you can, if possible, include free shipping. People are looking for a deal. People are looking for um, just the opportunity to save money. 88% um, of people polled said that inflation uh, will have at least some impact on their holiday spending this upcoming season. And 67% of people say their plan to mitigate inflation is by looking for those discounts. So by offering those, you're then not taking yourself out of consideration. And you're one of those brands and those different gift ideas that people would then actually purchase uh, during the holiday seasons for uh, for maybe a friend or family member. Um Creating holiday bundles and packages, um, this can be a seasonal thing um, as well. And so considering the, the product that you're looking to, to, uh, to sell and it, what makes sense to bundle, maybe there's a discount that you can bundle in that as well. So 
um, combining different products and then preparing those within your uh, product feeds um, so that uh, purchasers during the holiday season are ready to purchase from that point. And then planning your budgets. Um, this one is really important. Um, as, as many of you know, there are a lot more um, there are a lot more competitors in the advertising space as we get closer to the holiday season. What you don't want to do is increase budgets there at the last minute. Um, what you'd want is to slowly scale your budgets as you're getting a return on ad spend from those campaigns. Um, what Google is leaning on or at Facebook or any ad platform that you're utilizing for shopping is um, they're looking at, they're, they're more algorithmic based. And so by scaling your budgets sooner, you're preparing for that influx of additional search volume and competitors in that space for your particular product. So plan your budgets now as, um, as what you're paying for on a daily basis now will become more uh, competitive as you get closer to uh, the holiday season. So preparing there is really crucial. And then creating remarketing list audiences. This should be done year round, but you want to be thinking of them in light of the holiday season, especially. And so what ads, what dynamic remarketing campaigns or remarketing campaigns can you create um, for your audiences? And what would you want to be, what would those messages be? So uh, those lists are gonna be really valuable to you as you move into the holiday season, especially with for those who have purchased in the past or those who, uh, who have been to your website, but yet not converted. Getting in front of those people are going to be really crucial during the holiday season as they're the ones who have the most amount of interest in your product and are the most likely to then convert from your ads. Great. Yeah, that's all incredible information. Thank you so much for that. All right, we're moving into shopping feeds for the holidays. Um, Kyle, do you have any tips you could give us when it comes to the holiday shopping feeds? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, you want to start that early in that process as soon as you can. Um, by uploading your product feeds into Merchant Center, uh, the sooner you're able to do that, the more you're able to capitalize on these search en engines being able to crawl and index your site after submitting that. And so um, what's at your disposal now without putting any advertising dollars behind it is free local listings within Google Ads. Um, so you can have your listings available and they're ready to go and you're able to then capitalize on that opportunity right right even today. Uh, but then as you get closer to the holidays, the holidays you you are ready and prepared uh, for, uh, for running any shopping campaigns that you want to utilize moving forward. Um, you also want to make sure that you have enough inventory for the influx of purchasers that you'll experience for this holiday season. Season. What you don't want is to not have enough inventory for the purchases or the potential traffic that will come, influx of traffic that comes during this time. Um, an important thing to note is that uh, Merchant Center is a big, big opportunity for, uh, for, for businesses. Um, Merchant Center is actually currently, even this past week, uh, rolling out a new version of Merchant Center called Merchant Center Next. There's going to be a lot of cool insights and uh, different data points that you'll be able to utilize from the sale of your products within that platform. So I'd encourage uh, you all to jump in there and, and, and dive into what additional metrics are there. Um, but um, jumping in there and looking for those opportunities uh, within Merchant Center. Next, you'll find uh, the ability to upload those promo extensions that we were talking about. Uh, within your shopping campaigns or from a paid and uh, free listing perspective, um, you'll be able to uh, up, uh, set up dynamic or marketing customer lists, um, additional data points to educate which products you should be targeting within your uh, shopping campaigns. Uh, you can then look to see what images that are being displayed from your shopping network, what could be then optimized from there. And then um, and then uh, there, one additional call that I'd like to make is within Merchant Center Next is uh, a, a, an opportunity to be able to uh, use their new uh, product studio. This is very experimental and something new, but I did want to make sure to call that out. If you're if you're targeting a particular product without with a blank image behind it, this is a cool opportunity to utilize AI to generate scenes behind that product. So that allows your product to then pop from the shopping network uh, and stand out from the rest of the other products that might be uh, in that shopping feed there as well. So um, Immersion Center is a big one to not sleep on and, and really important as you jump into the holidays. Just as there's optimizations that need to be taken in campaigns within Google ads or Facebook ads, it's also important to dive into your feeds and understand what's happening there as well. Okay, great, awesome. 
Yeah. And so kind of continuing off of this, uh, you'll want to segment your products. Um, I think I, we see it often where shopping campaigns will be targeting all products. Um, there's strategy that can be done behind this. You can target and segment out your products by uh, bundles like we were talking about or different price points or, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can dive into product segmentation. But as you target your products within any campaign, it's important to segment them out so that you really know and can see the true value of what your ad dollars are going behind and if there's ROI behind what you're what you're putting behind that in terms of the monetary amount. So definitely segment your products, make uh, good conscious decisions about what you should continue to run ads for and what you shouldn't. And then um, and then you can optimize further from there. So segmenting your products out now allows for you to make better decisions down the road as you move through the holidays. Um, and then checking on your competitors' moves. Um, there's, uh, um, you know, this is important knowing who your competitor is. There's uh, some uh, tools within Google Ads that allow you to see, uh, you know, your competitors uh, to be able to see the difference uh, in spend and that they're doing there. But one thing to, to call out here is what are they doing on their website? What promos are they running? How are they, what are the costs, um, you know, that they're putting uh, putting out there? So it's important to just see what uh, what your competitor's doing and how they're going about that. See if there's something that maybe you're not doing that maybe you should. Um, and um, and then that gives you good insight into, um, you know, um, you know, why the performance is the way it is and what maybe we can do and optimize moving forward. And then the last piece here is streamlining your checkout process. Um, what's the minimum number of clicks to get someone through your website and convert? It's really important that we're, um, you know, making that conversion funnel as streamlined as possible. How many clicks does it take 10, 12 clicks to get to that checkout page? Or can we simplify that down to just to three or four? Uh, so thinking through that funnel and making sure that um, it's easy and that path uh, is clear for customers. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Moving into SEO. Andrew, optimizing SEO is best done early. Um, pretty much like everything else we've talked about. And I see here that August and September are pretty ideal times for getting started with holiday SEO keywords. We are still in July, so we're right here on schedule. What can merchants start doing now to set themselves up for success in the holiday season when it comes to SEO? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And, and you're right, SEO is a longer term. It's the long game of marketing. Um, and it's kind of a sliding scale of how much work you put in and how much time it takes to do it. So yeah, we're in the perfect time right now to start doing that work if you haven't already uh, for the holiday season. And what you probably want to do is if you're a merchant that has hundreds or thousands of products is prioritize the ones that you'd like to feature uh, in, in the holiday season and start working on those first, right? Because we're looking about six months that we see some real benefit from SEO. But the more work, if you do more work and do the right kind of the right thing is you can speed that process up a little bit. So um, initially what you want to do, right, is, is figure out which products and, and the corresponding keywords for those products are going to be most important to, to have a prominent place online during that holiday season. Uh, make sure your content is keyword rich with those keywords. Make sure it appears early and often, not in a spammy way, but where it makes sense, but make sure it's highlighted in that content. Um, if you can't optimize the URLs for your products with those actual names of those products as specific as you can, particularly if you do something like sell components like auto parts or something like that, where people search specifically for, for part numbers and things like that, you want to be specific in that URL too, that will help you rank as fast as anything. Make sure you're doing the back end work, right? Optimizing the meta tags, the titles and the meta tag descriptions in the back of that page so that they reflect the content on that page as well. This is what the kind of Google shortcut to reading that page. It looks at those particular fields and, and decides whether or not that page is relevant for those search terms and you know, give it hierarchy and the rankings based on that information. And then take advantage of little things like adding descriptive photo alt tags for images. It's good even for uh, to make sure that anybody can see it. If that, if that image for whatever reason doesn't render, that, Im that image description will still be there if someone's looking for that product. Um, you know, SEO is really about page hierarchy, right? You want to have the same keywords featured in the URL and the page titles and the content and the descriptions. And if you're consistent with that and continue to add content over time, we try to do it usually like monthly to add a piece of content around that. That forces Google to come back and re-index your page and decide whether or not it's relevant to those keywords. You will start to rank faster and faster. I think that um, SEO sometimes may be ignored more by e-com sites than other sites. And this is a real opportunity for you to gain some ground that you don't have to pay per click for. 
uh, no offense to Kyle, right? And pay-per-click is, is, is an amazing strategy and works best, but this will give you some additional traffic that you wouldn't necessarily pay for and help you even to identify some pay-per-click opportunities by which those keywords are generating traffic for you organically. So I guess the point is, um, after all that, to get started now and just look at those products, look at those pages and see if they add up to all those kind of things that we just talked about. Are they doing the things that you want it to do? If not, now's a good time to start working on it. Once you've added some initial work to it, we talked about the keywords, the URLs, the meta descriptions, uh, have those re-indexed by, um, by, you know, by Google and make sure they get ranked through Search Console. Um, make, you could resubmit those URLs. It'll, re, it'll force you to recrawl your site and again, start that ranking process. So put the work in, make sure Google knows about it and keep consistent with adding work from now until the holidays. And you should see some definite gains in ranking and page traffic for those products. Awesome. Great. And then what are your thoughts on off-page SEO? Off-page off, off page SEO can be equally as effective, right? You want to make sure you have that foundation of that on-page SEO for do first. And then when they refer to off-page SEO, it's typically having backlinks to your site. Um, this could be uh, a really good thing if you do it correctly, right? So which would be things like press releases or links back to things like from from um, from different from really accredited websites, uh, news sources, or even something like Facebook or something like that are really beneficial to you. Uh, it shows uh, one of the things that Google looks at is web popularity, which is kind of exactly what it sounds like. How often are you appearing on different websites that link back to your site? So you want to have a really good page built out to make sure that that when they people click back from that site, it, they're landing on what they're looking for, <laughs> and just having those additional links. Pointing back to your site gives your site legitimacy with Google's algorithms as well, too. So it's going to help you, again, rank faster and faster. So it's a really good thing to do. I think, like I said before, you want to have your foundational SEO done, and then you start looking for opportunities to drive additional traffic. You know, you get the benefit of that additional traffic plus the, the benefits of the of the higher ranking by having other sites pointing to your site. Uh, you can do that through, even through your own social media campaigns, too. Just make sure you're you're sending you're linking it back. You're not just leaving it on the on the on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest or whatever. That you have a backlink to your site too. If you do a press release or something like that, which we recommend as well, then leave that press release on your site, right? And then make sure it's optimized for search too, based on those topics we just covered in the last slide, right? You treat it like a regular web page on your site, and it will continue to give the benefit of that of that search popularity over time, right? And become evergreen content on your site. And you could get traffic from that for years if you if you kind of take the time to optimize those pages as well. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much. SEO is very important when it comes to e-commerce sites. All right. Moving on to our next topic, social media for the holidays. Um, Kyle, social media can be really powerful, especially around the holidays. What are some things store owners can do to optimize each social channel? Yeah, absolutely. So first is considering which channels that you want to be on and, and, and understanding your target market and making sure you're there uh, for that particular market. Uh, TikTok can be a great avenue for that. Um, and I think it starts with creating compelling and dynamic content, but really on brand content. We've been talking about it throughout this presentation. It's important that your brand is consistent from your website to the your email, from the organic content to the ads, but also on your social media channels as well. It's really important to start getting that content, especially for the holidays, started uh, and built and planned out here in July and October for the holiday season. So um, if, 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 if you don't yet have one and you have a TikTok account and business page for your business, have a TikTok shop as well, especially for those e-commerce accounts. Uh, people are buying and purchasing things directly through TikTok. Um, and then if you do have uh, paid traffic behind that, then you are able to optimize towards purchases right there through that TikTok shop. We see and experience a lot cheaper cost per conversions and higher ROI from TikTok shops. So it's important to have that optimized the content there that you're building within TikTok is, is really important. So that needs to be not as buttoned up and, um, you know, as, as official, but it does need to be natural and a lot more, um, you know, tailored to that audience. And we see a lot of user generated content within TikTok advertising and organic content. So it's important to have just a, a simple user gener generated con piece of content that is a, is a simple message uh, right there on your business page. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, one in seven internet users purchased or subscribed something as a result of TikTok in 
uh, the last 30 days. So this network is continuing to grow. Uh, and actually, um, I just pulled the, the the stats on this as of April of 2024. Uh, TikTok is actually only behind uh, four other uh, social media platforms in terms of popularity, um, just which is Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and WhatsApp. So it's sitting there at number five, which is a continually growing social media platform in this space. So um, and then businesses on TikTok, TikTok experienced an average of 7.8% increase in brand recall. So it's really important from an organic standpoint the, in your posts and the content that you're providing that it's on brand, but it's also there so that people begin to know and familiar, familiarize themselves with who you are um, in that in this space. Yeah, that's great. It's kind of insane how much TikTok has blown up within the past few years. Um, so definitely adapting to the new social media trends and channels. It's very important. And um, I see here that you also included um, a how-to guide for creating a TikTok shop. I did include that in the chat to all you watching here today. Um, so if you want to uh, set up a TikTok shop, it's um, the link is in the chat section that I just posted. All right. And then Kyle, what about Facebook and Instagram? Yeah, um, Facebook and Instagram, uh, or Meta, um, as they refer to themselves now, but they are uh, obviously still one of the biggest players in the social media space. And so, um, and they take up, um, obviously, the largest market share when it comes to uh, users and uh, in that in the social media space. So uh, continue to utilize Facebook and, and Instagram. Um, and you can, uh, um, you know, build that same consistent message on these platforms as well. Um, and so sometimes you can build content that is utilized across uh, social media platforms. And it's important to also begin that now and plan and prepare. Um, I would also recommend um, that there's a lot of ways to kind of get you plan and prepare yourself for those organic posts on these social platforms. Uh, there's a lot of tools that do that for you where you can build uh, out those different uh, posts that you have planned for the holidays um that are out there marketing 360 has a great built-in platform tool for this so that is a great solution um uh, you know to to also call out there as you're planning for the holidays um i briefly touched on this earlier in the shopping portion but uh dynamic remarketing ads are really important on facebook and instagram and um and in in getting in front of people and what that means is is you're showing your ad to those who have already looked at a particular product of yours so building those remarketing lists and getting in front of those people and having dynamic advertising set up on Facebook and Instagram allows you to get your product that someone's already looked at previously on their website. So we know that they have a high interest and high intent to potentially purchase through this particular campaign type. Um, and then uh, possible creative retargeting cam campaign, touch base on that with the dynamic ad. Uh, but if uh, you aren't able to set up dynamic ads, retargeting campaigns are also important as well. Um, and so, yeah, on Facebook and Instagram, it's important to have that same messaging and optimize your campaigns to place on both of these really, really big platforms. Great. Awesome. And then, um, Kyle, what are your thoughts on Pinterest? What are some tips there? Yeah, uh, the easiest way to think of Pinterest is that it's an online or digital magazine. Uh, people are looking and browsing and coming up with ideas. The the conversion funnel through Pinterest is definitely longer. These are the people who are tend to be more DIY, interested in uh, maybe refer, uh, refurbishing their home or looking for uh, ways to be creative um, with what they have. And so this is a great resource for consumers to be able to go to and refer to uh, and see products similar to what you're offering. So it's important to have organic content within Pinterest as well. Uh, it's still a huge player in the social media uh, space. And so um, it's it's important to have organic content here as well so that um, you're there and, and an option and giving uh, you know people and customers a resource for uh, for the holidays, especially uh, those who are maybe looking for and wanting gift ideas during the holiday season. This is a this is also an important platform to consider when you're uh, looking at which platforms or social media platforms make sense for my um, my target audience. Great, awesome, thank you. And then um, just wanted to go over a couple um, tools and resources um, that you can. Um, you can download that will help you keep organized for the holiday season. Um, you know, content calendars are great. 
They should feature space for launch date, copy images and links. Um, you also want room to add metrics like impressions, clicks, engagement, open rates after you publish uh, your posts. So a couple of things that can help you with that is the Marketing 360 social app. It gives you the ability to schedule posts in advance, publish to multiple social channels at the same time. Um, Google Calendar or Google Workspace. This will help you keep on track with launch dates for your seasonal content for promotions and sales, ads, social media, and more. Uh, Loomly is great too. It's a content scheduling tool and calendar. Um, it's super helpful when you want to take some time to plan a week or two ahead of time or even a month in advance. And then Trello. Trello is a project management tool, and it's especially helpful when you're working with the team to collaborate on projects, organize workflows, and track progress. You can see it um, in a visual way, and it makes the day-to-day -day tasks of working together and getting things done a lot easier. Um, and there are also like a ton more uh, free content marketing templates available online as well. We'll include all of these in the follow-up email that I'll send, it, send out tomorrow. And then we also have a blog on our Volusion site, how to build out a marketing calendar. I'll include that blog link in the follow-up email as well. So you have all the resources that you need. And I know that was a ton of information. Thank you so much, Kyle and Andrew, for all of that. Um, this, you know, will definitely uh, help us have a head start on the holiday season. So with that, we will move into our Q&A portion. And we did get a question earlier from Christopher asking, does Volusion have a wish list feature on the site? And I can answer this one. We do. Um, you would activate this in your merchant dashboard. Um, I did respond to you with the article, so you can go and see step-by-step -step and screenshots so you know exactly where to go, but um, essentially you would go to your merchant dashboard, go to, to the inventory tab, and then go down to products, and then from there, go to all product settings, and then there will be um, a window and you'll be able to enable wish list, and it's just like a checkbox, and then after you do that, it will show up on your site under the add to cart button. So if a customer were to go um, look at your product, instead of adding it to cart, if they just wanted to save it to their wish list, it will appear below the add to cart button. So we do have that. And I'll include that link in the follow-up email as well. So you have that. Um, and then we have another question. How can we integrate my store with Marketing 360. Let's see. How can we integrate my store with Marketing 360? We'll definitely send out um, some information to you all um, in the follow-up email tomorrow um, to give you all the information you need to be able to integrate that. And if you would like to talk to a Marketing 360 expert, um, we'll also include the resource for that, as well as if you want to meet with Angela Kirk. She's our customer success specialist here at Volusion, and she'd be able to do a website checkup for you and give you all the tips and tricks that you would need and um, any recommendations for Marketing 360 services as well. Um, let's see. And then we also had question here. Um, I tend to not post promotions for discounts in advance because then customers wait to shop. I lose sales due to customers waiting a shop. Is there any way around this to help avoid this issue? Kyle or Andrew, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, I mean, I think you can, I, I'm always kind of a fan of getting it out there as quickly as possible. If you're, if you're concerned that someone might be waiting to shop, you can open it up anyways. Right. And sometimes clients can, can, and you can even have uh, some inform more information about that product now. And if they want to purchase it now at that promotion, I would honor it even sometimes after the fact too. I think that's the discounted sale is better than no sale at all. Um, I think, I don't think, I think the opportunity cost of not having that promotion out there is greater than, than having people kind of being worried about people waiting until that last minute to buy something. And what you could do is sometimes we'll do is like tier the discount too, and maybe have it, you can have it kind of front loaded where they get a better discount if they purchase it now or, or an additional product that goes with it too. And then it can either, you can go either way, get better towards that time or, or, or just kind of stay the same, but give them incentive to purchase it now too, while still promoting whatever you wanted to do for the holidays as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's a great answer. Thank you. Okay, well, perfect. Um, any questions we weren't able to get to today, we will follow up with you tomorrow in that follow-up email. So keep an eye out for that. And um, if you had any questions, feel free to reach out to us at marketing at volusion.com. But we'll make sure to get you all the resources that you need and all this information, this great information to you in the follow-up email tomorrow. If you'd like to watch it back, we'll send out the recording as well. Andrew and Kyle, thank you so much for hosting this today. Um, this was super beneficial and we really appreciate our partnership with you guys. Yeah, we do too. Thank you for having us. It was our pleasure. Absolutely. All right. Thank you all for joining today. Have a great rest of your day. Too.